Welcome to Around the Peninsula. It is so great to be here back at the Peninsula Center Library on the rooftop to share the Palos Verdes Library District's newest operation since the pandemic hit. It is curbside pickup. They started this today. It has been a huge success with library patrons now able to pick up books and materials at all three library locations. You're asked though to come wearing a mask to do it safely. I'm not wearing my mask right now because I am practicing physical distancing. We are now gonna check in with the library's director to find out more about what's happening with our local libraries. First of all, I just wanna say thank you for for coming here to the Palos Verdes Library District. We are at the Peninsula Center Library. My name is Jennifer Addington and I am the District Director. So today we are kicking off what we are calling curbside pickup, although I think you can tell it's actually rooftop pickup, but we're okay. We, we figure everybody would understand what that meant. Um, since March 13th, the library has been closed. All PVLD branches have been closed, but today we're finally opening up a very limited service uh, and that allows patrons to come here and pick up their holds. Uh, patrons can go online at home and they can place items on hold, DVDs, movies, um, music, books, just about any physical item that we have. We find those holds, we pull them off the shelf, and we make them available for the patrons. Um, to date, they haven't been able to come in and pick them up. So now with this curbside pickup, they can go online, they can see that their hold is ready, and all they have to do is drive their car up. Behind me, we have a station set up so that they can come up. We do a touchless service, so we'll take your card, we'll scan it, we'll get the hold for you, and we'll give it to you, uh, and then you can return it later. So it's just one small service that the library is finally able to offer. Back at the library, how does this feel? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. We've been waiting so long to check out our library books. We used to come um, every Tuesday to story time, so he's really missed that. So what did you pick out today? Let's we park, picked out um, if you give a cat a cupcake, we've been into if you give a mouse a cookie. So we're tired of reading the same book, huh? It is very important that we create a safe environment as we interact with our patrons. So we are asking that people wear masks, they can stay in their vehicles, they never have to leave the vehicle, although even in the vehicle we ask that you uh, have your mask on. Um, all of our staff are wearing masks and gloves. We're doing as touchless a service as we can. When we get the materials back from our patrons, we are quarantining them for 48 hours, and then we'll be doing a light disinfectant on all the materials so they're, they're as clean as possible when we again lend them out to somebody else. I think one of the challenges with libraries is um, we actively lend out material that we ask you to bring back. So unlike a restaurant where you might pick up your food and go home, uh, we want you to bring that item back to us. So we have to set up a whole quarantine system for those materials and a cleaning system so that they're safe for the next person. Right. Of course, as we're doing this interview, I want to point out to the public, you don't have your mask on because we have practicing physical distancing with more than six feet apart we from are. everybody. And we want make, to make sure your message is heard loud and clear. Um, but let's move forward with sure. the fact, what does the future hold right now? Because of the challenges mm -hmm. of reopening the library to protect the public again and, the, and your staff um, from any possible um, issues with COVID-19. Yeah. How are you going to do this? You know, it's a uh, top of our mind. Almost every day we talk about when and how we can open areas of the library. Uh, we are a big building, especially the Peninsula Center Library. We have a lot of open space to the public. And once we do get to a time where we can open that back up, we need to make sure that those spaces can be cleaned and disinfected appropriately. So we're looking at state and federal county guidelines. We're looking at the CDC. We're following all health precautions. And I think it'll come in stages. This is our first stage of offering a, a rooftop service like this. And then slowly, I'm hoping we'll be able to open certain areas of the library um, with safety precautions. Uh, as a staff, we all wear masks. We disinfect behind us. We uh, practice social distancing, and we will do all that when the public comes back as well. I picked up a, a, a book on tape for my, for, for my landlady. Are oh, you really? excited to be able to get your books at the library again? It's, it's great. We're happy. 
You are doing so much at the library while your doors are shut to keep services open online. Right. I was so impressed with how many options there are for our community to Thank stay you. engaged. Highlight some of those options. You know, when we closed on March 13th, the staff pivoted and went online and they went online like gangbusters. Uh, every librarian that we have transitioned services to online and virtual services. We created a whole new web design that featured adult uh, activities, kids activities, teen activities. We filmed story times with uh, our children's librarians and we posted those online. We transitioned our book club to being an online book club, virtual through Zoom. We have, as you said, the quarantine with all kinds of activities and book lists for teens. We really tried to offer as many services as we possibly could through our website, through social media, through um, virtual meetings. It was just a way to stay connected and continue to offer the amazing services that we have here in a virtual environment. And we have continued to do that and will continue to do that as we sort of bridge that starting to open with continuing to go virtually. So everything from reader's advisory lists to um, tutorials on how to download tax forms or how to access databases, we have all that online now. And the librarians have just done a phenomenal job. One of the things we've seen become very, very popular, even more so than it ever was, are the downloadable and streaming services. We have two services called Hoopla and Canopy, where you can download movies and stream television series. Those have gone through the roof. Um, our downloadable audiobooks and ebooks, we've gotten more and more of them every single day. We've actually transitioned some of our funding to go from print material to the virtual material so that we can meet the demand that our patrons have shown us. And if you look at how many people are downloading books and streaming movies and streaming television shows, the numbers just show that people are absolutely using the library. They're just using it in a different way. Right. Um, on, a, on a more serious subject, of course, is how the pandemics have impacted our economy yeah. and local budgets. How are you managing? Because you really depend on the community to support our local library district. Absolutely. We have been affected by the pandemic. There is no question about it. Our internal revenue, which predominantly comes from our passport service, our text proctoring services, our room rentals, that all disappeared. We lost it all. Um, we continue to offer the services that we can, but we know that it's not near what the community would want. Um, and we're hoping to be able to bring that back. The financial hit has been substantial and we've had to really adjust some of our budgets and I'm incredibly saddened to say that we had to furlough some of our staff. I have all of our full-time people working right now, but we have a wonderful, wonderful crew of part-time workers from our pages to our clerks, those people that really are on the front line of public service. But when you're close to public service, unfortunately those people are on furlough right now so as we start to reopen we will start to bring them back but it's definitely been a hit and um, you know we're just going to do the very best we can to continue to offer phenomenal services to this community they deserve them um, and as soon as we can open up and and start to really be in person we will You've been with this district for a long time before becoming named its director, and you've done an incredible job, but who would have thought you'd be running a district during COVID-19 and a pandemic like this? For you personally, mm -hmm. how has this had to shift your management style and how you are taking on this charge? You know, I think we jokingly say, who knew a library school never trains you for a pandemic? But I don't think much of anything trains you for the kind of pandemic that our nation and really our world has gone through in the last few months. I think what library school trains you for, though, is to be flexible and to be adaptable and to be fluid. And I am so thankful to have an amazing team to work with. And we basically come together, we talk, 
We support each other, we're there for each other, we're there for the community. And I think when you have that kind of camaraderie, you can really attack and handle anything. Um, it's been tough. I've had to be um, more resilient, I think, than we ever thought we would have to be. Uh, but we're up to the task. Back on the curbside pickup, which has brought <laughs> us here on this rooftop, which yeah. we're excited. We're again at the Peninsula Center Main Library, but of course this is happening at all three of your libraries. What about when you go to Malaga, Cove, or Miraless? How is the procedures there? One of the wonderful things about the Palos Verdes Library District is the unique character of each and every branch. We are fortunate here at the Peninsula Center Library to have this large rooftop and you can see that cars are pulling in behind me and picking up their materials. At the Miraless branch and at the Malaga Cove branch, we don't have that. So there, patrons are being asked to go ahead and come into the parking lot to park their vehicle and bring the items to a central desk. Um, both branches have a setup outside where they're touchless, where we're practicing social distancing and wearing our masks and using our gloves. Um, but there they would actually exit their vehicle, come up to the table, do the transaction and then go back. Um, here we have a drive up opportunity, but uh, every branch has curbside pickup or uh, outdoor pickup, if you will, and we will continue to offer this until we can start to open the library more. Hi, I've got a couple books I need to pick up. Hi, Gail. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's exciting to see all these wonderful people, or at least some of them, a couple of them back in action. The fact that we uh, don't have to reread our books for the third time, that we can actually get new stuff, that uh, this process is going, and uh, it just means we're finally moving on. Uh, looking forward to when they do the book donations again. I've got a stack of stuff that I want to donate, and uh, I know the PB Library makes a lot of money that way, that they support everything, the wonderful stuff they do here with that. What'd you, what, what, what are you checking out? Oh, a Long Beach author. Uh, I read as, I think, the second one, and so this is the first one. It's an IQ novel. He's, he's a a kid that's kind of a detective in Long Beach. So in this, this uh, um, Joe, the author here, is, is a local guy, so mm -hmm. kind of cool. Just again to remind the community, if they want to put something mm -hmm. on hold and pick it up, how do they do that? Great question. The patrons should visit our website, which is www.pvld.org. And at that site, you can access your account you can find a book or some other library material, place it on hold. The only thing we would ask is that you wait until you get notification that your pickup is ready, and then come on down to the library and get it. And you mentioned to access your account. What about those new library members that need to set it up? Can they do that? You absolutely can get a library card right on our homepage. There's a link that says apply for a library card right here. Uh, you do not have to show ID when you do that. We'll get a digital card. We've been processing hundreds of digital cards since we've been closed, and we would love to give anybody who asks for one. And we know you're going to be processing, processing hundreds of pickups all week long as you've just started. How about for book drop-off? That's not happening yet, right? You know, we are accepting some drop-offs from the people who are coming to pick up their holds, but the book drops themselves will open up on June 8th. One of the questions I get all the time, though, also is, what about summer reading? The library district, we believe in summer reading. We love our summer reading pro, uh, programs. Uh, I'm wearing one of the summer reading t-shirts today, as are many of my staff, all of us in the bright red t-shirts. We are doing summer reading. Uh, it's online. We have programs planned. We have activities planned. There are downloadable sheets that you can track your reading. We have patches this year. We're going to mail them out to everybody. So don't think that we don't want you to read for the summer. And don't think that summer reading is not going to happen because it is. So I would just really want to welcome all of our community to visit the website, check out all of our services, check out the summer reading site, and participate in summer reading with us. And we, we miss our community. We miss all of our patrons. We can't wait to reopen. But we're going to do it when it's safe, and we're going to do it with care and thought. 
And when that time is right, we're going to welcome you all back. Now, I was thrilled to be able to check out Yellow Flowers on a Rainy Day during this curbside pickup. This book was written by an award-winning author and poet from Rancho Palos Verdes, Tanya Kahong. Tanya had been scheduled to speak at the library, but was canceled due to the pandemic. So now we thought it would be a great time to travel to Tanya's house to find out how she has kept her creative juices going during the pandemic, and she will share more about her wonderful work. Thank you so much. This is Tanya Kohong, and then welcome to my home during the pandemic. We have a social distance, but, you know, welcome. Thank you. And I've been wanting to have you on our show for so long. You are an amazing author, Tanya, as well as poet, of course, and um, and have done so much work living here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Talk a little bit about your work and your background. Well, I came from Korea, so, um, you know, 1982. And so I went to high school a little bit and then college and you know, all that. And then I got married. And then so we actually moved to Rancho Palos Verdes 1998. So we've been living here like 22 years. And I raised three children, um, Sulgi, Jungi, Ingi. So they are my three children. They're all grown right now. So my youngest is a freshman at the Boston University. And Jungi just graduated from UCLA. And then Sulgi graduated um, USC two years ago. And then my husband's working her. I really thought it's very important to share our culture, my culture, Korean culture, with children and also in a community. So when my children were elementary school, uh, Middle Cat, Middle Catalina, and I started doing the Korean day. So I bring my Korean outfit and bring the Korean stuff and share with them, show them how to bow, how to make a dumpling. And then I thought, oh, what about the library? So I suggest like, oh, what about if we teach, you know, culture? And I thought, I'm a poet. So like I thought, hey, like, let me like, you know, teach uh, poetry. But then I wanted to bring the food as well, too. So we started doing some, you know, making japchae and kimchi and then also having like them to write how to write a poem so like i teach them how to write list poem after that you know i got invited to all different libraries santa monica you know all different places so i've been sharing you know how to write a poem and then you know art and life right now i'm looking at your your table and, and you're sharing your work and i i just want to talk a little bit more about your writing, your poetry, your literary pieces. Um, just when did this all begin for you, becoming a writer? Yeah, like, um, I think, like, I was writing. I love writing, even though when I was a little kid. So I was writing, you know, when I was in Korea, writing journal, writing poetry. Even when I was little, I read, like, a newspaper, and then I submitted my, like, a children's story. Even I was like, they're asking for like, you know, submit your work. So I wish I kept that one. So like, even when I was a little, I write a like, you know, story and send it out. But um, basically I start writing and then I came to United States and then I was kind of sad. You know, one part was that I thought I wanted to become a novelist or like a writer in Korea. But I thought, oh, no, I cannot do it because I left the Korea and then English is like not my first language, so like what I'm gonna do, right? So it was like hard, but um, in college, I start like, you know, keep writing, right? And then my friends are like, hey, what are you writing? I wanted to know what you're writing about. And then I said, do you really? That's how my translation start coming in college to share with my friends. And then they said, oh, we love it, you know? And then I, in Korea, like you have to get like win the contest or something become um, poet you have to get the poet's license so hmm. 1987 I won two different contests so legally I am a Korean poet licensed so when you google you know they say like the name Korean poets and then you have to get the like this license and then my name is there and um, 1990 I went to Korea, I show you earlier. I was with Ellen Ginsberg in Korea. My first book came out like in 1993, before I just got married. And that is called Generation 1.5, that's the first book. 
and I got married, and then, oh my goodness, it's like I got children, after children, <laughs> children, <laughs> three children, and, you know, in Palos Verdes, we cannot go far, right? right? Even the market was far, and with the changing diapers, and then people go, like, you know, what are you doing with your view with the, like, ocean? I said, I'm crying, changing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you weren't writing then? Or? I was, um, you know, um, at the time, I was just kind of, in a way, really hard. And then, actually, I remember, like, it's so, and then I have a book called Diary of 1.5 Generation, Mother's Diary. Um, when my kids are little, I have to give my staff commitment. So I go bathroom and lock the door. And then I write 20 minutes. The book I'm looking at now, The War Still Within, you were supposed to talk about that at the Malaga Cove Library yes. when the pandemic hit. What were you going to be sharing with people at that at that guest lecture? Yes, yeah, so like the um, book cover, when you see that, and then even the, like a big one, that is like a, for a comfort women, like their sexual slavery during World War II. There were like 200,000 women um, were Korean women or include other you know, Asian women there are sexual slavery during World War II. Um, and though on book cover, there's the one pregnant woman called Park Yong Shim. Later on, she announced that, like, you know, that was her. 2009, she passed away, I believe. And, but the hard thing is, broken heart is, their first time they came out to say, yes, I'm a comfort woman, is 1991. The first woman, Hak Kim, came out, announced that, yes, I'm a comfort woman. So that was like almost 50 years later and that what happened. And then they didn't get apologized from Japan yet. And then, but uh, for me, it's beyond political thing as a human being what is these people's life would have been. And then so that poem that I call is a comfort women and it's a monologue, one person speaking. And then so they have I have like a, you know, six segments in the poem and so I'm talking about what they going through. And then what is um, living, you know. So that is the part, but it's not just that part. You know, I have the um, immigrant life story in there. And what is our American dreams? Mm -hmm. And then also as a woman, you know, how we um, live our lives. Not just are you only like an author and a poet, but you are a newspaper columnist mm -hmm. who you wrote, you know, for daily newspapers. You like to explore the issues of family, of yes. marriage and motherhood and ethnic identity. Mm -hmm. I think like everybody has creative arts and they, they don't know it. I think we just naturally, we are creative. And then they think like you, you have to publish something to be an artist. No. It's like um, someone like, you know, <clears throat> feedback to me is like, Tanya, when you read your word, you're a poet. But when you're in your kitchen, you're an artist because you decorate it. And then I think it's just life itself is art. We're like a living art. And then every day we create something. Well, for viewers watching right now that are so excited to read about read your works, um, and they've never read anything by you, what would you recommend for our, someone to go to the Palace Forties Library just to can pull up one of your works? What, what would you like them to read first? Oh. Can you recommend something for them to read? I mean, the, my latest book is very important to me because... Um, Which is The War Still Within. Yes, yes, and then I just got recommended for, like, you know, the book recommendation from um, California, um, The Lead Up. So excellent. Yes, I'm gonna show that to you, and maybe um, and then lately because we are pandemic, so I have like one of the book, like a poem called Kevin Fever. Right. That was like a few. I felt like oh my goodness, I was Kevin Fever, right? Right. In yeah. fact, I was saying I took out yellow flowers on a rainy day when I went to the library today for curbside pickup, and that cabin fever poem 
is in here. Oh. So how about we get you to read it, share, All right. to get us out of this cabin fever feeling. So you what does it feel yeah. like? So that would be in Yellow Flowers on a Rainy Day. And yes. I, I, by the way, I love the cover of this book. It's oh, thank beautiful. you so much. Beautiful. So cabin fever. It is not a snowstorm, nor a rainstorm, but my house door is locked. I am locked in a little place and I nurse a baby whenever she cries. I change her diaper whenever she cries. My, I make her burp whenever she cries. And when she still cries, then I cry too. I stay next to her whenever she is asleep. It is not a snowstorm, nor a rainstorm, but my feet are locked in this little place together. You're incredibly creative. So how is your creativity getting you through this pandemic? Oh my gosh, this is like amazing. The reason is, I don't know, my book just published or like, and then I was gonna do big launching my book. I was set up with a talking with the surfer writers, March 28 or 9 at the, in a book talk. And also I was gonna do big launching on the BM Broke in Venice for the, my book publishing party. And then I got also invited in New York City, uh, like so many, like probably 20 readings lined up. And pandemic, right? I thought, oh, April is National Poetry Month. I thought, I gotta have a project. I thought, hey, you know, what I'm gonna do, that I'm gonna read a poem a day and then put on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna do it. 30 days. It wasn't easy to <laughs> write. The other funny thing is come along because in my poem, I have a lot of Korean food in it because it's emotionally connection, right? And so then I said, oh, it, this is like a visualization. So why don't I share what is oxtail soup looks like? Then I got, tons of like the view saying, oh my goodness, we eat oxtail soup here too, you know, or oh my goodness, like how do you make a kimchi? How do you make a bulgogi? And then I thought, oh, why not? So, so you had the 30 day commitment to share a poem a day for April being poetry month, but also her, yeah. in May, because it was Asian um, celebration month or what? It's a, the May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Okay, so that's when you started doing your YouTube cooking channel where every day you're cooking a new delicious Korean dish, right? Yes. It's very important to share the food and culture and all that kind of stuff, so um, yeah. All right, so well, thank you so much. We're gonna come back and you're gonna cook from us. And I know you made us some tea, so I'm excited. Oh my goodness, okay, <laughs> let's have some green tea. Thank you. It was so great to hear about Tanya's stories and to find out more about what's happening here at our libraries. You can check out both websites, tanyakohong.com and pvld.org to get all kinds of more information. Remember, pick up a book, enjoy some summer reading. Thanks for watching, be safe out there.